Okay, welcome everyone uh, to another Captain webinar. Uh, this time it's my pleasure to have uh, our friends from Citrix here. Welcome Nestor, welcome Sohaib. Uh, great to have you here. Uh, and the topic of today's webinar is how to manage Captain with a Slack bot. So we've been working together uh, for the last couple of months and we are uh, happy to present uh, our last features uh, and how to manage Captain, how to interact with Captain via a Slack bot. So you don't have to leave Slack anymore. You can control a lot of features of Captain now directly within your Slack environment. Um, and I know that Citrix is also using Slack very heavily uh, in their own environments. And uh, they are also, they have been presenting uh, also at the Dynatrace Perform conference earlier this year. And we did already a webinar uh, together with Sohaib also earlier this year. So I'm really excited to have you here again and to talk a little bit about uh, our newest improvements to the Slack bot and also a little bit of the story around why Slack is so important and why chat ops and uh, like all this kind of automation is so important uh, at Citrix. Um, welcome also everyone in the, uh, as a webinar participant. Uh, let me just uh, share the information that please use the Q&A feature of Zoom so I can forward the questions to our uh, panelists here. And with this, I would just uh, ask you Nestor and Sohaib to just uh, quickly introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about the background of chat ops and the power of Slack bots uh, at Citrix. Sure. Thank you, Jurgen, for the opportunity. And I'm glad to join now my colleague and a good friend, Zohib, as well. Well, my name is Nestor Zapata, and I am um, the manager at Citrix for Compute and Cloud Services. What that entails basically is all of our global data centers, our storage services and architecture, along with our private and public cloud, including Azure, AWS, and GCP. Along with that, we are focusing on a lot of items such as automation, AI, and of course, uh, as we notice here, some of the collaboration we've done with chatbots as well. So uh, that's a brief introduction on myself. I'll hand it over to Zohaib now. Thanks, Nestor. Thanks, Jurgen. So I'm Zohaib Hassan. Um, I work for Citrix. I'm DevOps engineer. Um, I mainly focus on our automation and uh, CICD process and um, AI and always um, continue to improve um, existing processes. Um, Nestor and I, we have actually worked a lot on, on chat ops and how we actually implement it and all these sort of things actually uh, give us a huge return and saving tons of hours on a daily basis. Um, yeah, that's it. So I'll, I'll hand over to Jurgen and Nestor to continue the presentation. Yeah. So a quick story about chat, bot, uh, chat ops at Citrix. And this is a term uh, kind of coined when we've been working with um, not just Jurgen, but also Andy Gramner as well is the benefits that we've been able to have. One of them, as, as you'll see, is the automation of the releases. Before it would take us um, hours to get these releases out the door. We've been able to reduce this from four and a half, five hours, to now 15, 20 minutes of our releases to be done. And before we used to do releases uh, once a week, uh, Wednesdays was our day of choice. Then we went on to two days and now we're able to do releases practically every day. And in the lower environments, uh, pretty much all day, every day, sometimes even twice. Uh, within the hour. Uh, monitoring as a self-service is very important for us as well. Uh, very key to find out uh, not just if the system is up or down, green, red, but also empowering the user, freeing that data so the users can enable themselves to be able to grab that information for themselves and figure out where their application stands, how it's performing all on their own with the power of the chat ops that we have, and of course, integration with the Danatrace platform as well. In the self-healing of the apps, we move over to the future. We move over into uh, microservices. We move over into cloud. Uh, the more environments we have, the harder 
it is to maintain. And we do want to make sure that we're able to incorporate aspects of the self-healing. And we wanted to do that, right? We wanted to see what were the repetitive tasks, what were the items that we can go ahead and take care of, and incorporate that in our chat bots and our chat operations at Citrix. And just simply the automation of repetitive tasks, we were having uh, to do things over and over again. And this could be scary for some of us as engineers saying, well, that's a big part of my job, it's a big part of my role. If I automate too much of that, well, I'll be out of a job. Not necessarily, we've talked about that before and automating ourselves out of our current job role is a goal. And I encourage my entire team uh, to do that. If we were working at a tech level, move on to the engineering level. If we were working as an engineer, uh, pursue other avenues uh, from systems engineer, go into a DevOps engineer, automation engineer, and uh, or cloud engineer. And when we had that mindset, we were able to implement a lot of these facets and allowing us for the culture at Citrix to embrace the chat ops and be able to benefit greatly from it. Now, one of the things that we want to highlight are the bots that we have at Citrix. Probably in the past, we've been able to enjoy some of the presentation we've been able to do at Perform. We've had the opportunity to share these as well. And one of them are, well, a few of them here, monitoring as a self-service. And we see here the bots that we have. Uh, generally, if you had a question about something, you had to go to a dashboard somewhere, you had to ask the specific team, well, how is my app performing? Especially after a deployment, the developers would come to us all the time and say, hey, how is my app pool? How is my servers? How is this application? And we would have to stop what we were doing, figure it out for them, or maybe create a dashboard for them and get that information to them. But on the fly, we wanted to have, make something readily available for them. And that's when we figured out, well, let's show them the performance of their specific application. We were able to incorporate that using the Slack bot that we have here on Ultron and pulling the information that they wanted there. And of course, the self-healing of the applications. One of the things that we wanted to highlight there was the self-healing aspect. It knew that it was being monitored. It knew that it could do certain things. So what did we do? Well, we knew that certain things could crash and we knew that restarting it on the fly didn't require a change request and, and didn't require for it to be done um, specifically by a human being. So when the bot realized via done and trace that it had a specific outage, well, we were allowed it to go ahead and try to remediate itself. If we saw that a specific key service, this one here in Azure was failing, well, Ultron, the, our bot, would go out there and try to fix that for us. And if there was some intelligence behind it, if after the third attempt, it checked itself. It said, well, I tried to fix it. I did fix it, we're good to go. If it did that after three times and it could not resolve the issue, well then at that point in time, it would notify us via Slack or via email on the console as well. We would see in data trace that this issue had not been resolved just yet. And also something very important and very beneficial for us was the automation of the performance testing using the bots. And this one was a little bit new. We haven't uh, talked too much about this, but an integral part of it. It was great to deploy fast. It was great to get things going. But what about the testing? A crucial part of a cover CI CD pipeline and of course of a production environment as well. We do not just want to deploy something very quickly. We also want to make sure that uh, it is stable and we are giving the benefit to our business users and our customers both internally and externally. And with this automation, we were able to have these bots take over that testing. Now, are we replacing a testing team? Are we replacing a QA automation team? No, not quite. But now we're having our QA automation team, our testers, focus on enhancing their skills, focusing on enhancing some of these skill sets that they have for automation and allowing them to be more keen on what they have to work on with the business and focus what's really important on and is refining that process. And this is just a tool that allows them to do that. And on the releases for the bots, something we're very, very proud of, we were able to see there on necessity alone, we needed to be able to release code in the lower environments in pre-production and in QA. Uh, these developers were used to uh, deploying code 9, 10, 11 p.m. at night. When we had a shift in the organization, uh, Zohe and myself at that time took over that, that team and we didn't have the manpower when it came to uh, support all this 
and that level of service that they were expecting. And the business was demanding more and more. We cannot tell the developer, well, you can't deploy at 10, 11 o'clock at night because there's nobody available for you and you shouldn't be calling the production on call. So we figured out how to allow them to be able to deploy uh, via ServiceNow. And eventually we got that and integrated into Slack and they were able to deploy directly from Slack calling into ServiceNow. We took that mindset and we pushed it on into our production environment. And what it does now, it checks everything, the permissions that you have, it checks whether you're allowed to deploy into production using the service dot platform. And all this is done from our messaging application in Slack. And we see there that it gives you a status of doing everything. And again, we went from deploying uh, once a week to now deploying uh, every day and taking about four or five hours for deployment to now reducing 20, 30 minutes into the application deployment cycle. And of course, including testing within that as well. And we noticed that in the pre-prod environment, a lot of environments are being used to deploy at all time during the night and multiple times during certain hours as well. And one of the newest uh, additions to our chat ops environment is the CICD. And we notice here that we have uh, a full end-to-end -end, uh, talking with this bot, the integration with this bot. It prepares the release, it, it mounts it up for us, creates this branch, and updates these triggers in the CI pipeline. And it even lets us know when it's been done on the DevOps um, pipeline, specifically in Azure DevOps here for a specific release. So nothing very integral. We started with something very basic, and that's what we always want to encourage. We started with something very basic, such as checking a service. Then we moved on to, well, if the service is down, how can we be mediated on our own? And then we started integrating down and trace. And then we started integrating our CI CD pipeline. And it, we started off very small and every week, every month, every year. And over the past two or three years, we've been able to grow ourselves into more of a chat ops mentality and have it embraced by various teams. So something we encourage everyone here to do and uh, also uh, to look into the different avenues that you can benefit from this facet of automation and uh, the DevOps world as well. And with that, I'll hand it over uh, to Jurgen. Cool. Thank you so much, uh, Nestor, for, for sharing uh, your, your story of Citrix. That, that's really impressive. Uh, and uh, we already saw a couple of uh, icons there, like uh, Azure DevOps. Captain is also working with Azure DevOps. We saw Jenkins you're using. Captain is also working with Jenkins. So it's great to see also uh, the ecosystem that you are using at Citrix and we are using and how, Captain, how we want also Captain to integrate into different kinds of ecosystems uh, that we, we, we see that uh, all those um, uh, software tools and solutions, they are really valid for big uh, and huge enterprises. So what we thought about uh, the last couple of weeks and, uh, and months uh, when we worked together uh, with, uh, with you from Citrix, uh, how to actually make the Slack bot we already had, how to make it more mature, how to make it more useful for people to interact with, with Captain. Uh, and we thought about things like, hey, Captain, what are my projects? So if someone uh, starts to use Captain, maybe he's not uh, so much a tech guy and he's not so much used to use a CLI or an API. So why not just use um, Slack and ask Slack, uh, uh, ask via Slack, what are actually my projects that are already available inside Captain? What are my onboarded services that are already managed by Captain? And then how to actually get the evaluation of my service, what is the quality of my service? Will it pass the quality gate? If I want to release it, would it pass the quality gate um, and do everything inside your Slack there? Trigger everything from Slack and get the results directly back to Slack so you don't have to leave your Slack um, tool. And also taking it a bit further to also trigger Captain, uh, to also trigger tests via Captain. So tell Captain, hey, I've just deployed a new version. Maybe I did it with uh, the, the bots that uh, Nestor was just describing. So I just deployed a new version and now I want uh, to ask Captain, hey, please trigger some tests for me and come back to me once the performance evaluation of the tests is done. And if it's 10 minutes, it's fine. If it's one hour, it's fine. Just send me the results directly into Slack so I don't have to wait for and take a look at dashboards, but I will, I will have everything inside one environment. 
And we'll show this also in the demo, but before the demo, I just want to uh, show a little bit more about the background here, um, because you might have already kind of a, a Jenkins pipeline, let's say, where you build your artifacts, you build your microservice, you deploy to a test environment, you run the tests, and then you have to decide if it's allowed to go to production or if it's not allowed to go to production. And uh, let me reveal a little bit here, because with the Slack bot and with Captain, what you can actually do is you would just deploy it as you usually deploy it into your testing environment. But with the Slack bot and with Captain, you can then trigger the tests. Captain will reach out to the data provider. It can be Dynatrace, it can be Prometheus. Captain will do an evaluation of the quality gate, comparing it to the previous runs, comparing it to the, to the previous quality. Uh, then decide, it will give you a score and it will decide if it's a pass or a fail or something in between, like a warning. Uh, and based on this, then you can decide if you want to promote it to staging or not. But the whole evaluation and uh, the, 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 the check if the quality is actually sufficient, this is done by the Captain Quality Gate based on service level objectives that you define declaratively. And with this, you can really decrease this time where you will manually approve it because you have to take a lot of different metrics. You can really decrease this time basically coming down to only one minute because Captain will reach out to the data provider, as I said, Dynatrace or Prometheus will fetch the data, will do the evaluation and within, mostly within one minute, come back to you with the evaluation directly in Slack and then you can decide what to do. And this is one use case uh, we also want to demo. And I think it's already, oh, it's not yet demo time. Let me just explain what we are going to demo and how we set it up. So, so I will take over for the demo. I will just briefly explain what we are showing in the demo. So it's basically a very, very small uh, instance in GCP. So it's, I think it's a two vCPU uh, device on Linux machine. We install the case environment. So K3S is a very, very small Kubernetes distribution. Um, it's, uh, let's say it's a small Kubernetes cluster within one binary. We just use this as a runtime for Captain. Captain was designed to be cloud native and to run in Kubernetes environments. But for this demo, we only need the Captain control plane and extend it with Captain services, like a Captain extension in the terms of a Slack bot. But we don't need a fully fledged Kubernetes cluster. So we just use a small Linux box. We put our keys environment up there, we install Captain in this environment, we extend Captain with a Slack bot, and we have a very small demo application. It's basically just a shopping cart with a database where it stores all the, the items we put into, into the shopping cart. And this is our demo environment. And we connect this demo environment, of course, to Slack so we can interact uh, with Slack, uh, with this uh, environment. So now with this, uh, let me stop my sharing and uh, let me hand it over to Sohaib uh, and we'll see a little bit of uh, Slackbot in action. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Jurgen. Thanks, Nestor. Let me actually share my screen. And let me actually demo what um, Jurgen explained. And of course, all this inspiration came from our Slack box we have at Citrix, and that's a huge contribution by Nestor and myself to have this up and running. Um, so let's actually invite the bot to the channel first. Okay, bot is already there. It's just complaining didn't understand me. So if I say, um, at captain at help, it will return all the all the commands they can understand, right? So the start evaluation events, it, it, it can understand if we provide all the project services as stage information in there. And also enable to do the deployment finish event. And of course, we can query normal services, get project and get service. So if you want to just get started with it, I think the first command is help. The help will actually give you what it can do, what functions it, it has um, installed, basically. So if the first thing I would like to see what projects are running um, in my captain. So 
if I say get projects, it will return the projects we have running, right? So there's two projects running under Captain. We have a um, hipster shop and sock shop, and also is displaying um, what stages in those projects, right? So if I wanna if I wanna query the services running under each project, um, we can we can basically uh, say Captain give us um, get services of, for example, a project called Sock Shop. It's gonna, it's gonna return, it, has, it contains only one service called Carts. Um, so that's great. So now basically I have the project name, services name that I need in order to run the um, deployment finish event or you know, start evaluation event. So all the information that we have right from a Slack, by not leaving it, you know, not leaving Slack at all, we can do it from our phone as well. So, so first thing I would like to do, I think I will actually do the deployment finish event, right? So deployment finish event, when the captain bots and raid, um, this event basically gonna send a cloud event to the captain control plan and it's gonna actually, um, it's gonna do the deployment finished event. Um, Jurgen can talk more about later how this deployment finish event and how what it's doing in the background, but just say, let's just run the command. So if I say deployment finished, project name is sock shop, which we know because we just query from the captain. Um, service. Service is the carts. That's the only service running under this project. So we say the carts. And what stage, right? So if we look in the stage under our project, it can say it contains the hardening stage. And if we just give that stage in there. And now the next we will have our performance. What kind of performance test we want to run? So those performance tests are like the JMeter test, and they are JMX files, they're uploaded to the captain. Um, so if we, so we have for these two performance tests we have for this project, and the one I would like to run, which is a bit quicker, so performance underscore light, right? And now I need to give the deployment URL. Um, so I happen to have in my clipboard, so that's the deployment URL. And um, so at this stage, what captain is gonna do, the captain bot gonna do, is gonna uh, create the cloud event. It's gonna take all the, this data and just send it to the captain to start the, um, just to start those tests, right? And now you will see in action running a live, live demos are always risky. Let's do it. Um, so there you go, it has triggered, it has triggered the tests. Now, in the background, the bot is just waiting for test results, right? But at the mean, at the same time, it's saying, hey, you can actually look all the progress from the bridge as well. Anyway, the test fail. It kind of returned back, was saying with the result, it, it has failed. Uh, it comes with the bridge URL as well, along in here. Um, we can actually see it in here to see what happened. The, yeah, as you explained, the cool thing here is really that you can just trigger the tests and uh, we have the, we have uh, prepared the demo here to run two different kinds of tests. So it's either the performance tests, which is a full test with uh, a couple of, uh, I think, hundreds of um, virtual users in, uh, in JMeter and the performance light test is uh, just less users and less loop count. Uh, so it should be, it, it finishes very, very fast. Uh, and uh, as we can see here, uh, it did fail and we can inspect why it did fail. There are basically two ways how to inspect it, why it did fail is um, the first one is, uh, so I was showing us this right now. We can take a look in the captain's bridge. If we scroll down on the right hand side, we will see um, the evaluation result. We will see everything that was going on inside captain and we can see that basically um, it was failing because um, it might be that uh, the, there was too much 
No, it could not. Can, can we click on the icons or can we just uh, yeah, show all the sure. results here? So we can see a fail. And uh, if we go to, we could not, if you scroll down a little bit, because it seems like you could not reach um, the data. So actually, there was some problem with executing the tests. Um, let us try to run the performance test. Um, there is, as so I've said, there's always some fun with live demos, and uh, but of course there's always a technical. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so let's, just, let's run. Uh, Jurgen, let's run the performance, the actual instrument of light. We just run the the main performance test. That kind of takes time. Just to see. Yeah. Sure. Um, what does it do? Oh yeah, with copying the URL sometimes doesn't like it. So I think we have to copy it uh, twice. Um, so just copy this whole thing without the URL, I think it might work and then copy the URL separately. This is- Yeah, uh, that happens because what happened is the Slack just encapsulated a URL to a link. So what it does, it just added some extra um, kind of markup around the text. So that's the reason. Uh, we could do that, we can see. So right now it triggered the performance test, which usually take um, a couple of minutes to trigger, uh, to actually run fully. Uh, yeah, we should also see everything running in the captain's bridge. So we can yeah. trigger different um, uh, different performance tests. And uh, we have made this uh, to be configured uh, within captain. So, so with your JMX files, if those JMX files, they provide some parameters, you can configure it uh, via captain. So in this case, it's very uh, nice to also tell these kind of things within captain to tell Captain which test you actually want to execute. And uh, yeah, that's great to see that uh, now we yeah, work that's, it, uh, Yeah, that's good. So we, we, we run the normal performance test, which will take a couple of minutes to run. So the bot came back after a minute, but saying it has completed, it kind of got the, got the results back and good, it's passed, right? It was a performance test and now we can do the same thing on the bridge, we can see have passed, right? So these are the service level indicators. They were set it up. The response time should be less than 600 millisecond. So that's good. That kind of fall under the threshold. So pretty much all three fall under the th threshold. So it just got the full results. And we can see in the heat map, the very last one passed. So that is great. And the, the power from here is that we can actually do right from the, uh, Slack bot, right? And there is one more um, evaluation. I think we can actually start, we can do another one by executing the start evaluation event from the captain bot. Um, so start evaluation is just gonna talk to monitoring. So in this scenario is a Prometheus, it's gonna pull all those metrics and just with those, it's just gonna uh, just doing the evaluation, not the performance. It has already um, performance um, metrics in there in monitoring. So this time it's only the evaluation. So we can actually do that. So start evaluation. And um, I'm gonna say, hey, this is my project sock shop, service call cards. And this is the stage, right? I just wanna run for last, let's say 10 minutes. I can say 60 minutes, I can say 120 minutes, whatever I like. So I could say for the last 10 minutes. And there you go. It has triggered. Now it's waiting for all the results to come back. So that should be fairly quick. There you go. It came back fine. It was passed. And I can see in the Captain Bridge, it was executed at 331 my time. So that is the start evaluation event. Is that's the source of it, which is the Slack bot service and there you go it executed all the evaluation and that came back and pass as well so with that 
Uh, actually, that, sorry, that, that, can, you, can you show us uh, one more thing? Because we already saw uh, how to trigger, uh, I especially like the, the last part, uh, to trigger also the evaluation. So if there is already some, let's say there's some live traffic on your service right now, you don't want to trigger additional tests. You, want, you just want to have the evaluation. How is my service behaving right now? Will it pass the quality gate? Is there any error rate I should take care of? Because maybe you have a monitoring that is not automatically detecting these kind of things. So in Dynatrace, we do have these kind of things, but in Prometheus, you would have to uh, define alerts based on this. So if you say, you, or if you have your quality gates and you just want to run the quality gate evaluation, whenever you feel like it, you can do with the start evaluation command in Captain. And you can also take a look at a very detailed evaluation. If you scroll up a little bit, uh, you might have seen that there is an answer, like the captain bot is opening up a thread. Uh, no, in, in, yeah, here. There you so go. We can yep. see this one reply directly to this, um, uh, to this uh, basically question to start the evaluation. And we are just pasting the raw payload of the evaluation event. Uh, we are pasting this here. We are kind of hiding it in, this, uh, in, in a reply uh, so it doesn't spam your, your uh, Slack conversations but you have all the information you have here. And uh, we know that folks like it to just take this information, copy paste it and then take, uh, take a detailed look or just use this uh, and uh, do some more automation with it. So you can actually get all the information back into Slack and you don't, there is no need to take a look at the captain's bridge, but of course, a lot of folks like it because you get a nice graphical representation uh, in terms of the heat map of the last runs. But that's- uh, Exactly. Yeah. And this JSON, we know this is not really that human friendly to read. And this is one of the enhancements we will do um, down the line. We just make it more friendly to you to read, basically. Yeah. So with that, Jurgen, do you like to take over for the for the next? I think for the sure. Slack bot demo wise, we're good. We were able to be able to do the help. We know what commands we can execute. We started with our projects. We started with our service to see what services run our project. And then we were actually trigger our performance test by, by triggering the deployment finish event. With that, we actually run the evaluation by, by, by giving the number of minutes the, the, the evaluation we want to run. So with that, I will hand over to Jurgen. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, in, while I'm taking over here, I also want to answer one question we had here in the chat. Where is the Slack bot actually running? Uh, and uh, can you already see my screen again? Yeah, I think so. Um, so the Slack bot, uh, the, the, the Slack bot service itself, it's running in the keys cluster in this small um, uh, Kubernetes uh, binary. Uh, and I will show you how to actually get started and how also um, to do this. If it not answers the question, please uh, leave again uh, uh, some remark in the Q&A section. Thanks for this question. Uh, and we have a couple of installation options for, uh, for our Captain bot. So what we did in the demo is uh, we went for option number two, but let me just explain option number one first. Um, so the Captain uh, Slack bot itself lives in uh, our GitHub repository, in our Captain Sandbox, which holds uh, like new external services that interact with the Captain control plane. Um, so also Slack bot service is one of those services. Uh, you will find all the source code there uh, and you can install it from there. So we will provide a Kubernetes manifest how to install it. Uh, the only thing that you have to provide is basically an API token from Slack. So in Slack, uh, you would create a Slack application and you would basically go for a bot integration and you will create an API token that you give to the Slack bot service so it can connect to the right Slack instance. That's basically everything you have to do uh, and it will run in your Kubernetes cluster. For option number two, we use a very, very small Kubernetes cluster as set our keys installation, K3S, and uh, this installation option comes already with a CLI flag uh, to install it with a Slack bot. And we just have to provide a Slack bot token is an environment variable that it's picked up by the installation, uh, by the installer here, and uh, it will do the installation with the Slack bot. So let me just uh, switch over to my uh, GCP instance. So right now I'm connected to a fresh 
GCP instance. There's nothing running up here. And what I want to do is I'm going to install Captain, the latest version of this uh, Captain on K3S. I will fetch the installer. I will put the installer into the bash and I will execute it with a couple of um, flags here. First, I will install it with Prometheus. So I already have Prometheus as a data collector and the data backend. Uh, I will also install it with Slack, with the Slack bot. And I just uh, telling this installer I'm running on GCP so it knows how to fetch the environment um, variables um, and the external IP address. So there are other options, like uh, if you want to go with Dynatrace, you can specify with Dynatrace instead of with Prometheus. Uh, if you want to install others, there is uh, like a, a whole help section for this. So now what it does, it's, it's creating the keys environment. It's also installing the captain control plane on the keys environment. So it's basically already rolling out the nets operator that it's needed for the messaging. Uh, in our captain uh, environment. So it's rolling out the NETS operator, which is going to, NETS, uh, which is going to spin up the, the NET server. Uh, it will install all the services that are needed in the captain control plane, and it will go ahead and create all the external services that, that, that has been defined with our um, command line flags, like the Prometheus and the Slack bot. And we will be able to see, once the Slack bot is up and running, we will also see it in our Slack uh, I've already created uh, the webinar demo here. So I've created the API token and a small application. So we can see it's offline. The captain bot, this is the one that so I just uh, showcased. And we have the webinar demo, and this is not running right now. So if I type something here, it would not succeed because it's not up and running. Uh, we just wait for the installation to be finished. So we see the captain installation is running. I forgot to put on the stopwatch, but I assume it's faster than three minutes. So now it's already creating the Slack bot. Slack bot is now um, being, the, the Slack bot um, service is now being downloaded to the cluster and, uh, and, and the, the, the pod is coming up. So we can actually take a look. Uh, it's K3S kubectl get pods in our captain namespace. We will find all the services that have been installed. You will also get a couple of tokens you will find here. Uh, so no need to take a look at these tokens and use them afterwards because I will destroy the instance right after the webinar. But we can see the Slack bot services right now, it will fetch the, um, the container image and it will spin up the, the pod for us. All the other services are already running. Slack bot service was just a, the last one that has been um, invoked to start. Let's check again. It's already running and we should be able to see in Slack now it's up and running. And I can ask, as also so I've showed you, I can ask the help. Um, I, I can do the help function and I can also ask for all the projects that are already onboarded. And I think it's no surprise that it says no projects found. It's a fresh installation, so there are right now no projects. But um, from a very fresh Linux box, I just showed you how to install Captain with Prometheus and with the Slack bot within three minutes and now you're good to go. You can use the Captain CLI to um, create your projects, to onboard your services, and now to manage your services and Captain with your Slack bot. So going back to the slides, so we have uh, this up and running. Um, there is also a webinar on how to use the Captain control plane on keys. Um, I've provided a link here. Uh, and I will share the slides at the end of, uh, of the webinar with the participants, so you can also take a look. I just, I just want to say, this installation is so great. I mean, this is so handy. When, I think the previous, Jurgen, the initial installation we did, remember the mode of configuration we had to do, um, you know, all those um, YAML files, and you know, this exactly. thing, installing just with adding a one extra flag and it will give you the full bot installation. I think this is really awesome. Yeah, yeah, I'm also really happy to, to have this installation option. Uh, we still provide the previous installation option with the manifest. Uh, if you want to install it in your uh, already existing Kubernetes cluster, you, you can of course do this. 
uh, everything that we have uh, showcased today, you will find it in the Git repository. So take a look at the Slack bot service uh, in our Git repository. You will find all the environment variables you can set or some of those you have to provide, like the Slack token. Of course, otherwise, uh, without the API token, it won't work. Um, but if you have some ideas how to extend it, uh, we got some requests that uh, we should do a little bit of improvement of the, of the payload of the actual cloud events to make it a little bit more human friendly. You know, so I have already explained this. Um, so we will take care of this, but just visit us, uh, visit this project on, uh, on GitHub. Um, also, let's uh, star us on GitHub or just uh, leave an issue there, uh, leave a comment there. Let us know which improvements you would like to see uh, when you're using this. Also, if you want to get in touch with our Captain uh, developers, uh, if all the, the, with all the, the, the friends of Captain uh, using Captain and all these kind of uh, ecosystems, uh, ecos uh, ecosystem services like the Slack bot or JMeter services or um, DevOps integration, uh, Azure DevOps integration, then you will find all of them, all those folks on slack.captain.sh, that's our official Slack channel. Uh, you will also find us on, on Twitter, you will, we have of course our website and the, if you want to learn how to use Captain, take a look at our new tutorial hub, you will also find a lot of tutorials there. Um, how to get started um, really quick and easy. Uh, let me just take a look in the Q&H section. Yeah, there was one question uh, on how to get started and uh, what do I have to bring? Um, that's basically, if you want to have the full installation of Captain, you would have to bring a full Kubernetes cluster in basically any cloud. It can be in GCP, AWS, Azure, um, it can be an OpenShift cluster. So you will bring your own Kubernetes cluster and you will install the Captain control plane uh, and execution plane on this Kubernetes cluster. And then you can add more services like the Slack bot. Uh, so you just go ahead, first install Captain with the Captain CLI and then install the Slack bot service with the Kubernetes manifest. If you just want to have the Captain control plane and the Slack bot service integrated in the Captain control plane, you can go ahead with the Captain on keys installation that we just showed. And again, all those links you will also find in the slides here. Um, yeah, of course, uh, the, in, we got another question. Yeah, uh, everything also the Slack bot service is open source. Um, so uh, all the, the source is um, available on GitHub. Thanks so much, Zoe, for, for doing a lot of work on the Slack bot. Uh, and I think we are also happy to receive more um, input from the community, feedback from the community. So if there's anything you would like to see, just let us know. Um, with this, I'm just trying to get the, to pause the sharing here and to get the final um, link to also share the slides. Um, people requested to also take a look at the slides. Uh, that's of course, uh, we are happy to also provide um, the slides here. Let me just uh, put in a link to the slides into the chat box. And uh, with this, yeah, thanks a lot, um, Soe, and thanks a lot, um, Nestor, for joining. Just trying to find the chat. If there are more questions, just ask them in, please ask them in the chat or in the Q&A section. Uh, by the way, this uh, webinar will also be uh, live on, or will be, has been recorded and will be on, on YouTube uh, together also with our other webinars. And with this, I think uh, we are finally uh, at the end of this webinar. Uh, thanks so much. Uh, so I, Nestor, do you want to add, to add some more um, to, the, to the Captain community? No, um, we're... We're good here. Um, just a point of advice, uh, start small. It, it, it's a lot of cool things we, we've been able to do, uh, but it was a lot of work. Like you mentioned, you're getting there, a lot of work with Zohib, uh, a lot of more team members involved were just representing here, uh, that part of the organization. So starting small, taking the, the baby steps, if you will, and then moving on to the bigger and greater things. And uh, that way you don't get discouraged on doing that. But reach out to any of us if you have any questions, uh, not just on the technology side, but on the cultural aspect, because there is a cultural uh, change per se uh, when you implement uh, the chatbots and that type of 
autonomous operations in your environment. So feel free to reach out for that as well. Cool. That's, that's great. That's great advice, by Nestor. That's exactly when we started developing Ultron, and Nestor and I we used to kind of, you know, discuss what use cases we need to implement. I think that's a great advice. Always start very small, a very, you know, a small use case that just gives your, uh, you know, um, hand sturdy, and then you just add on the top of it. So that's great advice. Thanks, Nestor. Um, And yeah, nothing from me. I'm good. Yeah, thank you so much um, for joining us here in this uh, Captain webinar and hopefully see you all soon. Uh, Have all a nice, have a nice day. Have a nice rest of the week. And see you in the next Captain webinar. Thanks. Right. Bye. Thank you, Jurgen. Thank, Thank you, Zoe. Thanks. Thanks, Mr. Thanks, Jurgen. Bye-bye. Bye.